So welcome back to a new video. Um, this time a little bit of, of a different video here. Um, I think this might actually be very interesting for some of you. So in this video I actually want to talk a little about my journey as a programmer. Because now um, next year I'm turning 23 and then it's about 10 years where I'm into coding. And there was really a lot I learned in this time. And I just feel like I should share that with you. So basically, the, the biggest lessons I learned in, in, in my journey as a programmer here. And just for those of you who are interested, I'll just explain how I got into programming, how I learned back then, how I learn today. So this will probably be a little bit longer um, video this time, but it will be really interesting, I think. So. Back then it all started, when I was 12, I got my first PC. I remember it was Christmas and that was basically the, the best Christmas in my life. So I was really happy to actually get that PC. And back then, I don't really remember, but it has it had four gigabits of RAM. So back then it was a real monster. Um, and there was no Android Studio, so four gigabits of RAM was totally fine there. And when I think about that today, that some smartphones actually have 8 gigabits of RAM, that is just incredible. But back then, that was a pretty good PC. But when I was 12, I didn't really directly go into programming. Um, I still was gaming a lot and just playing around with PCs. That was just something that was always really fun for me. But when I was 13, I actually got this book here from my mom. So, thank you, mom. Maybe without you, I wouldn't sit here or without this book. And that book was about C++. It was a German book and the title basically meant Playfully Learn C++. It wasn't playful at all. So, it was basically a book that was about a pre-written game and you learn programming by navigating a bug or something like that through a maze with commands like bug, go left, go right, go top. And nowadays I even think this can be a good way to learn programming. But back then I was just totally confused because I, I really didn't understand where this game came from because we just included some DLL files and then we had that game. And I was just thinking it, it can't be that easy to, to code a game just by using commands like bug, go left, go right. And yeah, it was basically a pre-written game and that's what I really didn't understand back then. So frustrated little Philip put the book away and that is actually the first lesson here that I can tell you, it's, at least from my experience. This is no um, general advice here, but in my experience, it's not really helpful to learn programming with books. I tried that several times in uh, my journey as a programmer to learn with books and every time it went wrong. Because you, if you don't know programming, you have a really hard time to, to determine where to actually put the code that you read in the book. So in my experience that was just really frustrating and also the reason why I then put the book away. But luckily, I didn't completely stop programming back then. Instead, what I did is I researched for easier programming languages because C++ is really not the best language to start with. It's a really hard language. And then with a little bit of Googling, I stumbled over a programming language called Visual Basic. And Visual Basic um, was used inside of Visual Studio and that came with something called Windows Forms. And I was really amazed by that. So it was basically drag and drop UI views and you can build a full Windows application with that. So that really made more sense to me. And I felt like I actually do something there and I can actually design a program from scratch. So I really started building simple programs here. I put everything into a single file. I didn't know anything about object orientation back then. And I also didn't really care because I just had fun programming. And here's lesson two actually. If you're a beginner, then really focus on the fun part of programming. 
you will see so much on social media, on YouTube, that your code quality is important, that you should use the best practices in every case. And yes, that is true. If you're really, if you really want to make a complex program, if you want to make a program and really want people to use that, but if you're just starting to learn programming, you should really focus on the fun part of it. Really, code quality doesn't matter. It completely doesn't matter. I put everything into a single file and it was just fun. I learned programming really well with that. And you can still focus on code quality later when you're able to um, build simple applications. So I ended up making really cool programs like this party program here where you could simply decide how you want these single squares to look like, how they should flicker. It was really fun. I had a lot of fun back then just coding whatever I liked. Or I had this fully responsive program here, which basically drew a house grid. So that was, I think, with turtle graphics that I just drew these houses and I could um, determine how many I wanted to have. And yeah, it was just fun. And my personal highlight was actually a chat app. And sadly, I don't find this program anymore. <laughs> but this was actually not a normal chat app. Instead, it used FTP. <laughs> if you don't know FTP, that is a file transfer protocol. It's not a chat message transfer protocol. So <laughs> what little Philip actually did there is whenever somebody sent a, te uh, a text message here, then I uploaded the entire chat history as a text file to an FTP server. And <laughs> the other side had like a timer running and every second that whole text file was downloaded and set to the text history um, text box, basically. That was so terrible. I think there is no worse way to actually make a chat app. But in the end, it worked and it made me happy back then. And that's really all about it. Um, I didn't plan to publish this anywhere. I didn't really care. It was just fun for me. And that's what I just, what I can just suggest to you just have fun doing something. You really don't need to um, write the perfect program right away. And you also won't. This would just won't happen. And all that stuff, all that fun stuff I discovered back then um, made me decide to study computer science later. So I was 14 or 15 and I knew that I wanted to study computer science when I'm out of school. And I also didn't only stick to Visual Basic back then. I just watched a ton of YouTube tutorials back then. So besides of Visual Basic, I also learned Java. I learned C Sharp. I did a lot of stuff with C Sharp that also had Windows Forms. And since I got into Java at some point, I also got a little bit into Android development, but I never ever took it really seriously. I also never really <laughs> understood what I was doing back then. So I didn't understand the concept of activities, of the life cycle. It was just so much new stuff that didn't have anything to do just with a plain programming language. So that's why I actually quit Android back then and didn't spend more time with it. One thing I got more into was actually game development. So for my whole life, I love to play computer games and it was a little childhood dream to actually be able to make your very own computer game. And since I knew C Sharp pretty well back then, I discovered Unity. So Unity is a game engine that just helps you to make games very easily with C Sharp. And then I also discovered that you could also make Android games with Unity. And then I made a game called Infinity Runner, which was basically just an endless runner. I published it to Google Play. I borrowed my dad's credit card to actually create that developer account. And yeah, then I actually put all the ads out there into this app and tried to make some money. Well, my whole school ended up playing that game. Well, not the whole school, but a lot of people inside of my school, my friends, 
and they battled against each other in in break basically and that was really fun we had like an online high score list and it was just about who becomes the best in philip's game and a lot of my friends just intentionally clicked on these ads just so that i could make some money <laughs> and in a lifetime i made about 60 dollars with it which is not enough to actually um get that money because there's like a 70 dollar border on on ad mob so you need to earn at least 70 dollars to be able to get that money on your bank account and i also just put this link to this app in this video's description so if you want to try it out then check it out but that's actually lesson three now here if you want to publish an app don't have any expectations and with expectations i mean regarding income um, in 99.9 .9 of the cases you won't make a significant amount of money with an app that you publish if nobody actually knows you and that's really no issue i mean i don't say don't publish an app just go for it it can be real it can be a real achievement for you but it's very unlikely that you will make significant amounts of money with that and then i started to study computer science so i really did it i said when i was 15 i will study computer science and when i was 19 i actually did it and there were tons of things i actually learned in university that I never really got into before. So things like Git or hardware stuff that were just really interesting to me. And after some time, so that was last year in July or August, my friend actually started an Instagram page about recycling trash. And I really liked the way how he designed those graphics um, with a website called Canva which I also use for my Instagram posts nowadays. And I thought, wouldn't it be cool if I do the same with something I'm interested in? And that's when I actually launched my Instagram page. That was in September last year. And I had to think about which topic I actually want to make this page about. And I actually said, okay, I will go back into Android development, into, an, into native Android development, not with Unity, just plain Android development. And I didn't know anything when I started my Instagram page. So I didn't know anything about MVVM, about activities, about lifecycle. Well, I've heard of activities before, um, but I, I never really was much into Android. So I just started this Instagram page without thinking much about it. And also without expecting anything from it, it was just fun for me to show other people actually what I learn. And with this Instagram page together, I actually started learning Android development and I spent um, a lot of time actually doing that. And I remember when I started the page, I just put into my bio that people can ask me with their questions. And then when people actually asked me, <laughs> I just Googled the solution and help them out. So I remember the first guy who was actually someone who um, wanted me to help him with a syntax highlighter and I had no idea of that. But I quickly searched in Google and with the help of Stack Overflow, <laughs> I could actually help him out. And I really wrote a little program for him that, that really helped him and he was really happy. So that is my next lesson that, that I've learned if you want to grow as a developer on Instagram, YouTube or wherever, really do something for people. Really try to give as much as you can. The, the content is really only a small part of your success. Um, if people actually feel you really want to help them, then you will grow as a developer on social media. And I also remember that people started messaging me about MVVM, live data on the, and all that stuff. And as you can imagine, for somebody who was never into Android, I had absolutely no idea what this was about. What the fuck is live data? What the fuck is MVVM? Is that guy misspelling something? Is that a typo? I didn't really know, but I still tried to help them out. I looked into their projects, but I didn't understand anything. But yeah, I just kept on posting every single day. I learned every single day and 
that really helped me to learn Android development very fast. So that is actually my next lesson. I think it's lesson five now. If you really want something, you're always ready for it. So you will actually learn everything you need on the fly if you really want it. And at the same time, lesson six was there is no way you can learn something faster than by teaching it others. Because when you teach something to others, you're kind of um, responsible for the content you actually teach them. And that res responsibility makes you learn it yourself much better. And that's what I noticed. So I, I learned it so quick and I got into MVVM very quickly and all that typical Android stuff. So that when I started my YouTube channel in November, so after two months after I started my Instagram page, I was already pretty comfortable with Android. And I mean, now it's um, pretty much a year now from where I started YouTube. And there's really a lot I learned in this time. And that's just because I, I went into teaching and I just learned every single day. It's all about consistency in the end. But I also have to say that I would have never been able to learn it that quickly if I wouldn't have the years of programming experience before. So if I wouldn't have started with 13, there was no way I could learn Android development um, in, in a single year. So that's also what I always preach. Really focus on your problem solving skills, because if you're a good problem solver, you can learn anything in programming really quick, because that is the foundation for everything. Everywhere you need good programming, uh, good problem solving skills. Really just stop focusing on the perfect framework, on the perfect programming language and start focusing on really learning what is behind programming, what it's all about, about logical thinking. And I would really say that in this single year since I started YouTube, I learned more in regards to programming than in my, or let's say then in four or five years combined. I would easily say that. Not in regards to computers in general, but in regards to programming and code style and architecture. I really learned so much and I can just recommend anybody out there to start your own brand, to really start making content. It's really fun and you learn so much. You will have it easier to find a job. You will have it easier to um, earn some side income and just to help and inspire people. And that is just something that really fulfills you. So thank you everybody for watching this far. And I'm really thankful for every single one of you who supports me with their likes, with their comments, just with their views on my videos. And of course, those who support me financially by getting my premium courses on my website. Without you, I couldn't really do this in the long term. And all this just makes me so happy to be able to, to help a lot of people here while still doing something I love. And I hope this video was somehow interesting for some of you. And these lessons that I learned were just helpful for you. You can apply them to your life. Um, if so, please let me know that below. And also let me know below what were your biggest lessons that you've learned in your journey as a programmer. I'd be really inter interested in that. And yeah, just let me know that below. I wish you an awesome day. See you in the next video. Bye bye.